Hermann Rosenblatt does have a real story of survival in the Nazi concentration camps, a story that is genuinely extraordinary. But as he explained to us in this exclusive interview, he felt he needed to make things up to get people to pay attention. The greatest love story we've ever told on this show. Oh <laughs> Herman Rosenblatt received international attention for his story about being a hungry little boy in a Nazi concentration camp who was thrown apples every day by a little girl on the other side of the fence. Years later, according to the story, Rosenblatt met that same girl on a blind date in New York City, and he proposed on the spot. They used to come by every day, bring the apple, have in my jacket and a piece of bread, and he used to say, I'll see you tomorrow. The story landed Herman and Roma Rosenblatt on Oprah twice and in newspapers all over the world. They also got a book and movie deal. But the story wasn't true. Why did you do it? Why did you tell such a big lie to so many people for so long? It wasn't a lie. It was, I, it was my imagination. And in my imagination, in my mind, I believed it. Even now I believe it, that she was there and she threw the apple to me. How, how can you say it wasn't a lie? It, it wasn't true and, and you know it's not true. Yes, it's not true. But in my imagination, it was true. Rosenblatt says he made the story up to give people hope and to promote understanding about the Holocaust. But members of his own family say his real motivation was money. So you were not motivated in any way by money? No. This is from your son. He said that he knew you were lying for years and he couldn't get you to stop. And here's his quote. It was always hurtful. My father is a man who I don't know. How do you respond to that? I don't know. I can't respond to it. I don't know why he said that. I don't know what, maybe I'll ask him. Herman and Roma Rosenblatt told their false story publicly for more than a decade, but it all fell apart about six weeks ago after Holocaust scholars proved that it was physically impossible for prisoners to approach the fence at the concentration camp where Herman was kept, and that Roma's family was actually more than 200 miles away at the time. Why did your wife agree to go along with this? Did she ever express any because reservations? Because she loves me. Why is she not here today? Because I don't want her to be here today. She's too much, too much going on. Was it difficult for your wife to have to go out very publicly and tell a story that she knew wasn't true? It was. It was. But she loves me so much that if she thinks that's good for me, she'll go along with it. Rosenblatt is remarkably unrepentant about his years of lying. I pronounce my love for you forever. When you look at that, does it make you uncomfortable at all? No. You think that was the right thing to do? Yeah. And, and, and while you were up on the stage there, in front of all those people, yeah. in the back of your mind, were you not thinking, No. I'm not telling the truth here? No. Let me ask you just quickly about I didn't hear you say you agreed to that. Do we agree to that? Is that is Our interview was frequently interrupted by this man, Harris Solomon who says he is planning to produce a fictionalized movie account of Rosenblatt's story, despite complaints from critics. If you look on Holocaust and our websites right now, they're using it as we speak as an example of why you shouldn't believe Holocaust survivors. Right. And those Holocaust and our websites would perpetuate some other story if it wasn't Herman Rosenblatt. Rosenblatt says he wants people to know that he did what he did with good intentions. So if you had to do it over again, would you tell the same story? Yeah. You would? Yes. Rosenblatt does say that he's sorry, but he's only sorry, he says, that people took the story, quote, the wrong way. His book deal for a nonfiction memoir fell through a couple of weeks ago because of this controversy, but a fictionalized book may come out this summer, and the movie version is supposed to, supposed to, excuse me, supposed to start shooting this summer as well in Eastern Europe, Diane, and they say they're going to carry on despite the criticism. I simply don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, it's his imagination, but he knows it's not true. He They're says he made, a... Up a, he made up a fantasy world, and he was living in that fantasy world. And his son says, tried to stop him. Yes. Good heavens. Okay, thank you, Dan. Pleasure.